Good evening everybody, this is Harry Muppet, going to cast a diamond level game. Now at the bottom right side we have the Tauren, who rolled as random but ended up as Protoss. And on the top left we have our Zerg player called Pain. So that's a pretty cool name. Um, yeah, let's see how it goes. Let's have a look at the map first. <coughs> So we've got a nice set of cliffs over here. I believe these are a little bit too high for uh, Reapers. You can see this is a, a double actually. So you go up here and then you go up there again. So too high is definitely too high for Reapers. So basically the only way you can get in is from the side. And it's got a nice little expansion here with a nice wide ramp down to the central killing area. And also goes off here to this uh, third over here. And then from there on, it's got pretty wide ramps going all over the place. <coughs> so it's uh, fairly easy to just... There's there's quite a few paths that you can take, probably about three or four main ones you can take to get from one base to the other. <coughs> so Zerg went for a fairly quick spawning pool, actually. He uh, is not going for a Ling Rush, I don't believe. But he did get that quite early, so we'll see actually what he's going to do with that. He is producing some links now. He may just keep on producing links. Maybe these are just going to be scouts, but I'm not sure because that was a very early spawning pool. We should actually put that on. Um, <coughs> Protoss player. Looks like he's going fairly standard. Gateway is nearly finished and the gas is nearly finished at the 15 probe mark. So nothing really special going on there. One drone coming along, uh, going to look around for a scout. Of course, he doesn't know which race um, this guy went, but he's going to find out that it is Protoss, and that makes him pretty happy, I guess, because he doesn't have to worry about a Ling Rush. He doesn't have to worry about any super early sort of pressure. <coughs> so, we'll see exactly what happens here. Going to get two Zerglings, but... Oh... No, that's a bit of bit of unfortunate luck for the Tauren. He gets the Zealot out, and immediately after he gets it out, he uh, selects it and then puts it into hold position. But unfortunately, the half second between it popping out and him s being able to select it was all the time he needed for the Zergs to come up. Then the Zealot just sort of jerked ahead. The Zerglings got around him. And that was all she wrote. I, and uh, he really needs a stalker out here because there we go. He's gonna try and scare him away a little bit. Once he gets the second zealot, he can block with the back zealot, and he can move this first one into attack. And here we go, the mothership course. That should hopefully scare these guys off. But it is attacking these bricks, and that is a very bad mistake. He could lose a cyber core because of this mistake. Just get the zealots out there now. You you don't want to. There we go. It's gone. So the Zerglings have a run in here. The Zer the Protoss has tried to get a wall off here, but it's not going to be that good. He really, really needs some stalkers, but unfortunately, with that Cybercore gone, he's uh, no, it's not very good for the Protoss player at the moment. That pressure by the Zerglings just pushing through the Cybernetics core. Not only did he get a, a couple of probes, I think here, but he destroyed the Cybercore and that is going to set the Protoss way back. And of course he had to spend a lot of minerals producing all these pylons that he probably didn't need at this point. So yeah, the Protoss not good, off to a good start. Meanwhile the Zerg player has his gas just coming up now so he's going to transition into uh, whatever else he wants. He's got the hatchery coming up. The Protoss is going to see, how to see a probe and he's going to try and make something happen with these two Zealots. He's uh, he knows he got a bit on the back foot there, a little bit down, so if he can come in here and uh, knock this hatchery out, then that would be excellent. There's six Zerglings coming out, but the two Zealots should be able to handle six Zerglings, especially with the support of this Mothership Core here. So we'll see what the Zerg does. I expect him to produce a lot more Zerglings, or maybe just get some... just cancel this and put some spine crawlers up the top. Uh, I I don't expect him to try and hold this off. I expect to cancel here because 
Otherwise, that's three minerals down the drain. Yeah, that was the uh, that was the closest cancel I've ever seen. You actually saw it pop up and then it got cancelled. So, very nice timing there. Just uh, holding up the zealots. He's got the run in here. So the zealots are going to be way too late. But oh, there we go, mothership call. Where is it? That's a beautiful um, recall ability, I believe it is, to get those units back home. So great use of the mothership call's abilities there. And those zealots, in addition to the sentry, are going to be more than enough to scare off those zerglings. And unfortunately, the zerglings don't have speed yet, so they're not going to be able to really push in here and start harassing these probes. They're just not fast enough to get through this blockade without losing too many, and maybe one would make it through, and that's not really enough for him at the moment. It's good to see him getting a couple more gateways here because he's only got one gateway so far. So his production has been a little bit starved. But he's, uh, he's definitely teching up now. And he's getting his expansion. So the Protoss is... I think he's pulled back quite well. He put some pressure on the hatchery. Uh, forced the Zerg player to make a couple more uh, Zerglings than he probably would have wanted to. Forced the Zerg to make a spine crawler, which is pretty much useless <coughs> now. So, yeah, that was, a, that was a very good move by the Protoss player. Did what he needed to do, and I think we're back to uh, being a bit more equal in this game. We'll have a look at the income tab real quick. <coughs> you can see the Zerg is about four workers ahead. Uh, two workers ahead now, so relatively even on that count. Zerg probably uh, would have wanted this hatchery up a little bit faster, but it's not going to be too slow. Still going to be up uh, fairly well, fairly well, and uh, Protoss expansion is doing good, so maybe the Protoss is even pulling into the lead a bit on the harvesters, but the Zerg can produce harvesters so fast, it's not even funny when they want to, so <coughs> I don't expect that worker lead to last very long. Meanwhile, we're getting a half-decent army out of the Protoss player. Uh, the Zerg does have 16 lings, though, and those are lings with speed, so he is going to be able to move around the map fairly well and get back and do some defense when he needs to. So he's droning up fairly heavily now. He's uh, pulling ahead of the Zerg player. Sorry, pulling ahead of the Protoss player, and he's putting quite a few defenses here just to make sure that that sort of thing doesn't happen again, which isn't a bad idea, because, I mean, if the uh, Protoss just m started building a massive army right now, going for a late foregate, so to speak, then he could do quite a lot of damage, because the, the Zerg has been droning up quite a bit, and these 16 Zerglings wouldn't hold off a full foregate attack. But the Protoss is uh, still hanging back, still choosing to build his production facilities. He's going to go for the full gas, he's going to go for double stargates. <coughs> so we're going to see either some void ray action or some phoenix, but he's actually looking like he's going for double oracle. Um, I haven't actually seen the oracle used that much. I know it's very good for harass, it's uh, quite fast and it can attack ground units directly, unlike the phoenix. Uh, I believe I'm not actually sure, too sure about the abilities of the Oracle, but we'll probably get a chance to uh, check them out firsthand in this game. And we'll see exactly how good it is. This pulsar beam is disabled, so I'm not sure what the deal with that is. Uh, we'll have to see what goes on with these units. It's uh, yeah. I, I like this UI layout a lot. It's so beautiful to see it, but this is one of the things that annoys me. You can't see the abilities, which you can see with the other one. Now, let's just hold on for a sec. Just, uh, I don't think I can change it in here. I wonder if I can change it in here. That would be awesome. No, it doesn't look like it. It looks like it requires a restart. So I'm not going to restart it. I'm just going to switch that back, and we're just going to continue casting with this one. And we will learn by uh, watching and seeing what they do and uh, maybe having a couple of guessworks on these abilities of these oracles. Meanwhile, the Protoss player is going to move up here. So maybe he's going to go in for a double attack, but he sees the Overlord. Meanwhile, the Zergling is going to go in here, do a bit of damage. 
Meanwhile, these oracles took out that queen quite fast. So we've got double action here. These guys are going to do fairly well. The Void Ray is going to take out those Zerglings, so that should be fine. Nice beam, but there's some fungals on there and some infested Terrans should do a lot of damage to these guys. Now these guys are completely out of energy at the moment. One last infested Terran chasing him around. I don't see why he didn't run out of there, but... Oh man, that's so little health there, left over. Not very good for that oracle. So we're, we've got one Void Ray here, a couple more coming out. This expansion is not going to last very long. There's a bunch of Zerglings, but that is quite a lot of Zealots. And I don't know what these guys are doing. Maybe they're going to try and do a force field or something like that. But they're uh, way too far out. So the sentries are going to get picked off somewhat. Which is very bad for the Protoss because they are very gas expensive, those sentries. <coughs> Meanwhile, we've got one Oracle over there and one Overlord over there. So he's... Uh, he, he wants to do the hanging around the base, sort of in the background, overlord type thing, but unfortunately he's not Zerg, so he's decided to leave a bunch of oracles lying around instead, and I mean, that's probably about as close you can get. They, they don't look like overlords, but if you really wanted them to be overlords, then I suppose you, you could say they are overlords, except they do other things, which overlords don't do, and they can't spew out creep. But, having a look at this game, look at the income tab, the Protoss is ahead on the income, and this is very bad for the Zerg. The Zerg needs to be ahead on the income. Well, it doesn't need to be ahead, but it always helps if he is ahead, because, yeah, just because it's better. I mean, it, the Zerg us usually need to have at least one base up, and a lot of that, I think, is to do with the Chrono Boost, because the Protoss have the Chrono Boost, which make things go a lot faster. The Zerg do have the Spawn Creep, uh, sorry, not the Spawn Creep, the Spawn Lava, which does help. But yeah, it is. Yeah, it's basically the the Zerg should always always be a base up, just because. Uh, well, they need the hatcheries, I guess, is one of the main things. I mean, if you had a macro hatch, then it might be a different story. But right now, with only two hatcheries, I don't think his production is going to be quite as good as the Protoss, especially with the... Uh, well, I don't know if his Warcase are actually going full speed, but his two Stargates definitely are. He's going into a fairly scary Void Ray army. The, Pro the Zerg is going to counter it with Infestors, I believe, and he's also switched into Ultralist tech. So that's going to be pretty good versus this Grand Army. The Protoss... Excuse me. Doesn't have any Immortals to counter that. The Void Rays do have their overcharge ability, which gives them bonus damage versus armored. So I believe this goes up even further. So and they just absolutely flatten armored units when they're using that, but it only lasts for about 30 seconds or though. That's a beautiful cancel over there. We're going to see the Zerg go in. Doesn't have Zealot legs. It's just coming up now. And that is really, really going to help out because there's so many Zerglings on the map. <laughs> Over here we have another oracle just waiting for this base to come up and uh, the Zerg does see it but he's not paying all that much attention. So hopefully this oracle is going to get off some sweet... No, actually it's not. It's going to get fungled and some infested Terrans are going to go after that. So it uh, looks like we just saw one of the uh, oracle's abilities. It's... Uh, basically just shrugged off that fungal. The fungal was on there for like a second and a half and then it was just gone. So it seems like that's one of the Oracle's abilities. So that's pretty sweet. Now if I think, actually what I'm going to go ahead and do that's not it. I want the I don't want the achievements. Where's uh, where's the, where's the, where's the, where's the, where's the, where's the, where's the where's there's, a, there's a help thing usually. It's that F11. That's the chat log. Uh, here we go. Alright, alright. Just bear with me a second. If you're a pro, pro player and you already know the abilities, then goody for you. Um, revelation. Okay, so we can cast that enemy structures. So that's opening vision, but obviously you have to select the structure to be able to see the vision. We haven't seen that because we're seeing both players. 
So he can detect cloaked. Ah, okay. So he charges his weapon and allows it to attack ground units. Now I can't see the ability to actually shrug off that fungal growth. So we're going, just bear with me a sec. I know this is uh, this is boring and you already know this way more than I do. Yeah, four seconds. So he was getting rid of that a lot faster than he should have been. So I'm guessing that one of these abilities shrugs off the fungal growth. Maybe Envision. Uh, I, I would say Envision. Perhaps, I don't, I don't know what else could do you doing that, but <coughs> it does look like we have High Templars, which is very good. So High Templars are going to be fairly good against the Zerglings, of course, with Storm, but I don't think he's got them for Storm. I think he's got them for uh, Feedback to use against the Infestors. And um, so that's, that's going to help out quite a lot. He's going to be able to Feedback the Infestors, and the Infestors, if we find them, so this guy has 200 energy, 90 health. So feedback, of course, drains all the energy and deals damage equal to the amount of energy that the infester has. So that's going to be quite devastating. I think fungals cost less than 110 energy off the top of my head. So even after it casts a fungal, a feedback on a fully uh, charged infester is still going to one-shot it. So we'll see exactly how this Protoss army does. See, these guys are uh, got their weapons charged up. That's the Zealots, excuse me. So he charged up for a little bit, gonna go in there. We'll see how the feedbacks do. There's the feedbacks popping off. And that was just absolutely brilliant. Um, pretty much all of those infestors died. And I don't think a lot of fungals got hit off. Probably a couple on these Zealots, because they're looking pretty messed up but that could have been the zerglings as well because there was a massive amount of zerglings I didn't see any storms there so it's probably just the feedbacks from the high templar although we do have them morphed into archons now so any further zerglings are just going to get massacred by those archons and these archons are also going to massacre and you can see there this sort of a uh, whispery little thing here I believe that's the the oracles envision so we can click that on a building and you can see what's going around in there. Maybe, maybe that's just this building. Maybe it just always does that. I don't know. I thought he was checking for an overlord up there, but apparently not. So yeah, Protoss army goes in. The Zerg was, um, well, he was banking a lot on his infestors, I think. He was really banking on getting a lot of fungal growth off. Fungal growth is actually very good versus a large amount of void rays because they clump up like there's no tomorrow. I mean, you talk about... Marines clumping up and you talk about other units clumping up but Void Rays do tend to clump up quite a bit because you're always focusing them on one unit. Yeah, it's, it's a bit hard to split them up and I've seen in versus AI games that I'm looking at this. Is this thing still running? I can't tell if it stopped casting or not. Please tell me it hasn't stopped casting. Alright guys, I'm back. Um, yeah, sorry for this uh, quick little interchange. Um, I actually did, the fraps crashed in the middle of my cast, and then I pressed F5 again, thinking I was going to keep recording, but unfortunately it didn't keep recording because it had crashed, but I, um, I completely forgot where I was when I finished casting, but I believe we were going to talk about the awesome unit composition which finished off the battle, and what the Zerg could have done to win a bit better, and... The answer is pretty much not a lot. I mean, he had a pretty good units, and the Infestors... He, he didn't have as big an army as he probably could have, but the Infestors were a good move. He moved into Ultras and Zerglings, which wasn't too bad, but it wasn't a really awesome combination either. And meanwhile, the Protoss had the High Templar, which basically just wiped out the Infestors so fast it's not even funny, and that's pretty much why the Protoss run one, sorry, and they did an excellent job, and the Zerg did a pretty excellent job either, but he didn't use, get to use the Infestors to his full capacity, which was uh, probably a bit disappointing on his part, but anyway, that's the end of the game, hopefully Fraps doesn't crash again, uh, it was lucky it crashed only at the end of it, but, alright, let's go ahead and let's finish off this game, thank you very much for watching, and this is Harry Muppet, hope you enjoyed it.